Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tim Gleisner from the Library of Michigan, Head of Collections, here talking today with the author Kelly Baptist, author of Isaiah Dunn is My Hero, winner of the Michigan Notable Book 2021 uh, Award. Kelly, congratulations and, and good clapping there. How are you today? <laughs> Thank you so much. And I am doing fantastic. How about you? Oh, I'm doing good. It's raining on my side. How about you? Well, since I am no longer in Michigan, it is sunny and hot. I am currently in Las Vegas. Um, so definitely a switch in weather, a positive switch. <laughs> Congratulations. Very good. Good job. So Kelly, you know, just like I start with every author, tell us a little bit about, your, about yourself, your background, and uh, how you became a writer. What got you into writing? I just know I've been writing for as long as I can remember. So I can't pinpoint a time where I was. That's probably an easier way to answer that question. Um, since I learned how to write um, letters to my parents and my sisters is kind of how it started. You know, I, I would always write letters and put them in the mailbox and tell my dad on the way home from work, you know, don't forget to look in the mailbox and it would be a letter for him there. Um, nice. And from that point, Poetry was a big thing for me. I loved rhyming words. And so mm -hmm. I wrote a lot of rhyming poetry and then short story, longer stories. So just as long as I can remember, um, since I learned how to write, I was okay. writing. So let me ask, where are you from originally? I am from Michigan, born Where and about? raised in Michigan. So I was born in Detroit and then my father moved us to the west side of the state. So a little city called Berrien Springs, um, mm -hmm. not far from the Benton Harbor, St. Joseph area, uh, maybe about 10, 15 minutes from there. Okay. And, okay. And so you've been writing as long as you can remember. So tell me, mm -hmm. why do you write? It is just as natural to me as, as breathing. Um, I know we all have our different gifts and different interests. And for me, um, it was just a perfect way to express myself um, a perfect thing to do in the summer, in the winter, anytime. You really don't need expensive materials to write. You just need a pencil or a pen and some paper. And so it fit really well with my personality. I was never like a play with dolls person or um, an imagination, which is weird because as authors, we do use our imagination to create stories. But sure. even to this day with my kids, you want to play a dolly game? I'm like, no, I don't. I Let's read a book. <laughs> So for me, that was the outlet um, to get creative and to experience things that I wanted to. So I have two sisters. I love them dearly, um, but I, I wanted to have some brothers to go along with that. And I didn't get that. So I would write that a lot in my stories, characters where there were a lot of brothers or a lot of kids in the family or the family is traveling. Uh, so it was a way to create what I wanted to be happening in my own life or to explore things that um, maybe I wasn't doing currently in my life. So that's probably a big reason. Um, well, this is not happening in real life. We're not going out to eat all the time in real life. So I'm going to write a restaurant story. Um, and for me, it, it was just a way to experience those things. That's fantastic. So I got to ask that. So you're the first writer I've heard this from before. So let me ask, I mean, your imagination then, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. all about your imagination. I mean, do you still draw on that today as a professional writer? I do. Um, I'm more of a realistic writer, though. Um, and I, that's how I read, too. Like, when I read, I want it to, to, quote, unquote, make sense. Like, this could really happen in real life. And it's only recently that I began to think, you know, you can put some fantastical things in your stories. And so right, right. starting to explore um, that prospect. But I have always been kind of more realistic and um, in the imagination. Yeah. So, so as, you, as you're going along, you, you start writing these stories as a child, you know, filling in the gaps that you're not finding in real life and things like that. I mean, how did you go from those stories to now Isaiah done. I mean, what, what, what were you doing along the way? Did you go and, uh, you know, what was the furthering of your education and your writing career in that process? Well, um, I wrote all throughout my elementary, you know, middle and high school. Um, one thing I got into was plays kind of in middle school. Mm. And I went to a small Christian school 
And my teacher principal really gave me the freedom to express myself through that. And so they would let me write the Christmas play that our school was gonna put on. So I would write it, me and a very good friend of mine. And this is like sixth, seventh, eighth grade. Right. We would write the play, um, hold our little auditions for the parts. And, and you guys were actually practice. holding auditions yeah. to other yeah. kids. Mm -hmm. oh, that's yep. awesome. right. Or signing like, this sounds like you, this character sounds like you. And then we would practice. We would practice uh, the play and then put on the performance for families. And I feel like that empowerment meant a, a whole lot to me at that point. Then going into high school, you know, doing different writing contests or essay contests and that type of thing. Um, my, my second love, you know, there's a love for writing obviously, but the second love um, is the hospitality industry. I love hotels. I grew up loving mm -hmm. hotels and anytime we went to one, I love to explore them. And um, my parents also empowered me for some of our family vacations to pick the hotels that we would stay at along the way. So that's kind of the, the track I went in school in terms of college and what I studied. I wanted to go into something in hotels. Um, okay. In my senior year of college, I made a switch in my major. My minor had been English professional writing and my major was business management. And I switched those my senior year to wow. take a, you know, a greater focus on writing. Um, okay. And so another interesting fact that I'll share, I don't think I've shared this in an interview yet. You know, when I was younger, teenager and whatnot, um, or even a child, I, I was writing more adult, which is very weird. Like there would be kids and, and things like that. But what I noticed is I would write older. You know how they say kids often read up. Sure. So you read genres that are, or, or fiction that is above where your target age range is. So I was doing that with writing. And it wasn't until I was an adult that I started then writing for kids and young adults. So kind of a swap <laughs> okay. happened at some point. It, I think it was having kids of my own that spurred that on. Um, but just all along the way, it was there would always be writing, even if it wasn't the major focus that it is now for me. With Isaiah Dunn, the, the idea of that story started in 2011. Um, hmm. I was living in Florida at the time, had a family of my own, and just something about homelessness has never sat right with me. Sure. And it's something I always question even as a child. Um, my father tells the story of us visiting Washington, D.C., and we're doing some sightseeing. Uh, we came to an area where there were a lot of homeless people and they had signs and, and I would ask him, can I have a dollar? He give me a dollar, I give the dollar. We walk, I see somebody else, can I have another dollar? And we're doing this all, all along the street and I'm young, you know, five or six. And I'm just like, I just want to help. I wanna help, this shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like this. And so with Isaiah, I wanted to kind of tell the story of a kid who was going through that, going through homelessness mm. and how that journey would look like for a 10 year old. Um, we know what it might look like for an adult and, and the struggles that might come for an adult dealing with it. But what if you were a 10, yeah. you know, and you had to lose your, your home or, and you're sleeping in your car, but yet you still have to go to school. You still have to function. You're still expected to behave a certain way right, right. when you're carrying all of this pressure. So that's what I wanted to explore in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah's story. So I got to ask, I got a bunch of questions now, but so one question I got to ask you, I mean, what kind of research did you do? I mean, you talk about writing realistically. I mean, like what did you draw on stories that you had read about or heard about, about homelessness with children? I mean, what, what were you researching for Isaiah Dunn? Uh, or were you just drawing upon things that you'd heard? Yeah, kind of more um, things that I've heard or seen. Okay. Um, and it really just came from the heart, I feel, in, in writing his story. And the, the really crazy thing about that is later on, after I'm finished, you know, then I'm working at a school district where I'm surrounded by Isaiah Dunn's. And it was really? almost like writing that story prepared me for what was to come. And I've been in situations where I'm picking up a parent and her child from a motel to bring them to school for a meeting that the mods have. 
Kelly, you froze. Oh, um, uh oh. No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I thought I lost you there for a second. Good. You're back. Okay. Am I still no, here? No, so that's fascinating. So you're working yeah, for yeah. a school district, mm -hmm. um, and we can edit this out. So you you're working for a school district um, where you met children who were basically inspirations, if I may say. I mean, mm -hmm. you didn't say that for Isaiah Dunn. Uh, were you writing down notes at that point? Were you just mentally cataloging, you know, the experiences of these kids? Like, how did that work, if I may ask? I actually love that phrase you just used, mentally cataloging. And I, I feel like that's what a lot of my life has been. Right. Um, you know, seeing and feeling um, and sensing a lot of things. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what it more or less was, just cata cataloging those things. Um, the short story, which is in Flying Lessons, the Beans and Rice Chronicles of Isaiah Dunn, that's actually the beginning of his story. So this came before, you know, I'm working in the district and, and any of that. And um, that story was out. I was sitting in my office uh, one day. I was working in human resources. And across the street from my office was uh, a shelter for women. And every now and again, I'd be looking out my window and it'd be this one particular woman who would walk down the street with a stroller and she'd have another child walking with her and they'd run their errands, do whatever they were gonna do for that day. Sometimes I'd see them come back, you know, closer to when I'm getting off of work. And one particular day, I, I turned my head just like this, looked out the window, there she was walking with her kids, but it was freezing cold outside. Mm. And I remember thinking, it's just, it's so cold. And, and there she is walking still. And I said, that could be Isaiah Dunn and his mom was, and his sister. I got to ask, was this in Michigan then when you talk about- Yeah, it was in cold? Michigan. Mm -hmm. in yeah, Michigan. Okay. <laughs> a nice, great old Michigan winter. <laughs> well, no, no I, I, I only ask because to be honest with you, that was something, you know, as a committee, we, when we read your book, there were certain members who were like, this is Michigan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is Michigan. This is <laughs> yeah. set in Michigan. Yeah. Um, and, and it was very telling. Um, yes. So that's that's fascinating. So you let me get the progression right for our for our viewers here. So you had this short story before mm -hmm. you worked in the district, and then yes. that helped flesh it out more. Yeah. Uh, seeing her on that particular day when I looked out I the window, it was like I've got to continue his story because I never thought about continuing it before. It was the short story, um, entered it in the We Need Diverse Books short right. story contest. It won that contest, so it was included in the anthology. And no, I thought that was it, even though Isaiah originally started as a novel. I kind of condensed it um, into a short story to enter for the contest. Right. So he's been rounding and round in circles from a novel to a short story, and then back to a novel again, but that sparked my desire to continue his story. I felt like this kid is not finished talking. Um, I have real life examples all around me and these kids need to see themselves in story. So that's what inspired me to continue. And that's what led to Isaiah Dunn is my hero. Oh, that's amazing. So I got to ask the name Isaiah Dunn. I mean, is there a significance to that name? Is there, you know, or is it just a name you pulled out of the air? I'll, I'll let you answer. <laughs> well, I think the significance is um, sometimes we think of heroes as these big, mighty individuals who do amazing things. You know, you can look at movies and you think about Superman, Spider-Man, all of those. Right. Um, but to me, if you are a 10 year old who has to deal with um, some traumatic events, you know that Isaiah lost his father um, we know that his mom is dealing with depression um, mm -hmm. from that, You've lost her job, you're losing your home, like you're responsible for your younger sister. If you are able to deal with things like that and still show up at school and, and try to do your best and get along, um, to me, that is hero activity. Mm. And so a kid like Isaiah, I look at a kid like that as being a hero and as being my hero. So it's not only me speaking to him. I felt like the title is me speaking to Isaiah, right. the character, but also the Isaiahs in real life as well. Like you think of yourself as maybe struggling, but you're a hero because you're still coming to school and you know your clothes might smell like smoke because you're in a motel or that they're old or they're too short. 
you still coming to school and trying to give your best, that's hero activity to me. And so that's why that's the significance of the title. That's a great, I mean, that's, that's a great explanation. I mean, I, I, I have to ask when you say speaking to the, the Isaiah Duns of the world, I mean, for your outreach into, you know, different communities and stuff like that, have you been able to take your book and speak to maybe homeless children, so, you know, across the country at all, or? Not specifically, um, because Isaiah came out in 2020. So as we know, you know, the travel, <laughs> yeah, yeah. travel is a little different. So I've done some virtual school visits. Um, and I've even had the privilege of some of my students reading um, the book. I had one of my students, uh, she was about to get suspended for three days and she was sitting in my office waiting for her ride to pick her up. And she looked over and she saw the book and she said, is that your book? I said, yeah, you can read it while you wait. So she started reading it and her grandmother arrived. I said, you know what, why don't you take it with you? Mm. You can read it while you're out. And then when you come back, we'll talk about it. And I didn't think she was, but she took it and she read it. When she came back, we talked about it. And there were some themes in there that she could relate to um, in terms of relating or interacting with classmates. And that was the whole reason she was going out. So to me, that has been such a blessing just to, to know that kids are like, you know, he reminds me of me or mm. I have an angel in my class or just things like that. Um, it's been a privilege. Well, and I, and I only ask that because when I worked in public libraries, and I don't want to make this about me, but we would we would definitely have experiences with homeless families and homeless mm -hmm. children. And I remember one poignant story at a library work that here in Michigan, where a child came in and wanted a picture of their family home, and we had pictures of all the houses and buildings of the city. And when I pulled out the address that he gave me with his mom in tow, and he was maybe eight years old, it was a picture of the mission downtown mm -hmm. and then it dawned on me like it, they never said anything to me but it dawned on me that they were there and that just yeah. I, I'm sorry like it, this is probably one of the first books where I'm just like sitting here getting maybe a little emotional about mm -hmm. it. so um your your process I mean you've been writing this since 2011 mm -hmm. um I, is it an, a daily thing? Is it just as, you know, the spirit gets you and you, you sit down, like, I got to add more to Isaiah's story. I mean, like, how often are you sitting here working on this story or we're working on this story? So for this, um, I guess since it's such a weird journey. <laughs> so 2011, I did maybe 50, 60 pages of what I thought was going to be a novel. Right. Then kind of set it aside um, because life was happening. I think I was on my third, no, probably fourth um, child at the time. So life got busy uh, mm -hmm. at that point. So set it aside. A few more moves happened in my life. So from Florida to Minnesota. And um, it wasn't until I heard about the short story contest that I revisited Isaiah um, and thought, you know, I could probably finesse a piece out of what I have from this. Okay. And so that's what I did. And, and then in terms of writing, Isaiah Dunn is my hero. That was probably um, 2016, I want to say, 2017, mm -hmm. when I started deciding, you know what, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna keep writing and see what else Isaiah has to say. And so as much as possible, I would try to make it a daily thing, even if it was a paragraph or right. a few sentences, just to make sure he stayed fresh in my mind. Um, something that helped a lot for me was the audio book. So I would listen to the short story audio book, just the, the narrator, I'm listening to the voice and the tone and that kind of kept yeah. me in the head of Isaiah um, a lot. So shout out to Adam Lazar White for an awesome narration, <laughs> um, helped me tremendously. So let me ask you, you related to that, who, are you, who do you read? Like, who inspires you? Uh, you know, who do you try to learn your craft from when it comes to other writers? Mm. Um, Mildred D. Taylor is the first one to come to mind because since I was a young girl till now, I've been reading and rereading everything she's written. Okay. Um, and from her, what, I, what I've received is just the strong sense of family that she um, weaves into every story. I love it. Yes, there are struggles that her families face 
in her novels because it's face, based in the South, um, the early 1900s, I think like 1930s, 1940s. Um, so definite struggles, but I think there's also beauty because families then um, were so interwoven and close. And that's something I've admired um, of her writing as well. Um, read Jason Reynolds, Angie okay. Thomas, like The Hate You Give, um, and even mm -hmm. Concrete Rose, her, her newest, uh, were just so fascinating to me. Um, Elizabeth Acevedo comes to mind. Um, so those are probably who I read the most. Um, Matt De La Pena, Meg Medina. Um, yeah, some of, my, some of my favorites. So now you, you, just, you just said earlier that, you know, this, would, this was set in Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess my question to you is, do you think this would have worked anywhere else? Do you think this I do? Story? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I did a, a virtual visit with an after school like book club in Philadelphia. And they're like, is this Philly? Is this Philly? And I've done one with New York. And they're like, it feels like, you know, it's a city in the north. Like it could right. be New York. It could be Philadelphia. It could be Detroit. It could be Chicago. Um, because that's the kind of vibe that that I get from the story or that I got as I was writing it, you know, just kind of city. Um, you get the winter weather right. um, and just it's a different feel than if it was set somewhere else. So in terms of location, it could have worked somewhere else, but I would keep it to a, a northern or a midwestern uh, city, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. So let me <laughs> ask you, um, you know, with our current situations as a country and everything else, what do you think the relevance is for Isaiah Dunn uh, in today's society? What do, you, what, do, what do you think would be the relevance? I know you've already alluded to a lot of it, but mm -hmm. well, yeah, what do you think is the relevance in today's society with your writing and, and Isaiah Dunn specifically? Well, I think homelessness is still uh, a major issue. And I think um, it doesn't, always just mean I'm sleeping on the street. Mm. Uh, you could be considered homeless if your family lost their home, and, but you're staying with a family friend or you're staying with a cousin or something like that. And yes, you're in a home, but it is not your home. And I think that's a situation a lot of people find themselves in as well. Sure. And that, that falls under the, the umbrella too. So I think just expanding that um, because yes, we cheer for uh, Isaiah when they move in with Miss Rita, who is a family friend. Well, you know, technically under McKinney Vento and, and anything else that would be tracking him in, in school and, and, and that type of thing, he would still be considered um, a homeless student. So I think just expanding on the definition of that and shining a lens on the impact that that might have on your students. So mm -hmm. as educators or librarians who interact in and, um, and mingle with these kids just to know that might be doing something to them, you know? Yeah, they might appear fine, but there might be certain triggers based on that situation that we should be mindful of and pay attention to. I think one of my biggest mantras is there's always a story behind the story. Mm. So this kid didn't just push another student out of her seat, what's going on behind or underneath the, the surface. So. I think that is the relevance for us to take time to really understand someone's story and not just the story they present, but the story behind the story. You mentioned one of your audiences, teachers. I mean, have you, have you interacted with a lot of teachers about the story and about what you just said, you know, knowing that story behind the story of a child, if you will? Yes. Yeah. And, and you know, working in the school, I, I realize how difficult it is sometimes to tune in to each individual student. If you have a classroom of 20, 25, 30 kids sure. um, and all the different personalities and, and the different things that they might be, be dealing with. So I do recognize that. And I've had teachers say, you know, I have a kid who does this or a kid who does this. And it really helped me to, you know, maybe have an extra conversation where I might've been like, you need to go to the office. Um, so those are wins in, in my opinion, you know, because I think that's our, our responsibility. Some of the stuff that some of my students and students across the country are going through as adults, we would struggle, right. you know, so you're 10, 11, 12, 
brain not fully developed, like how do you cope with those things? So they, they do need um, extra care, extra grace extended, I feel, mm. and just, just the willingness to try to understand um, and make decisions based on that relationship that you build. And I mean, it's such a universal story too, right? I mean, across communities, I mean, I mm-hmm. live in a medium-sized Midwestern city and you hear about it in the districts and you see it in the libraries and everything else. I mean, basically these children had, in one year will have multiple addresses, you mm-hmm. know, uh, and, and you're right, how they affect them. I mean, that's a really good point. So let me ask you, um, how did it feel to be selected as a Michigan Notable Book author? It was such an honor, um, this being, well, I'm not there right now, but that being my my home state um, was just, it was such an honor uh, to be recognized um, in that manner. And to know, you know, if you, you've read the story, you see that there are Pistons, Jersey references and, and things like this, a little clues to let you know where alliances, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> however painful it might be to have those alliances. Um, you know, so it felt, it felt like a great honor, um, to be recognized and to have well, that story be recognized. Well, it's a fantastic book and, and I really want to thank you for it. And I, I know the committee wanted to thank you for it because it is just a fantastic book and thank you to all our viewers and, and Kelly, do you have anything to add at the end today? Um, I just always like to encourage, like I said before, you know, um, to be kind, to be empathetic. And it doesn't hurt you to do that. (laughs) And so whether you are a student or a teacher, you know, your classmate, your teacher, even adults, like we go through things as well. And, you know, it's so it's so beautiful when a when a kid is like, you know, I hope you have a good day or just smile and say good morning. That does something to us, even as adults. So that free flowing um, good vibes is what I would encourage and what I hope people get from the story, you know, to look for the story behind the story. And actually, I got one more question for you. Does Isaiah still speak to you? Is he yes, still have more to come? Does yes, he still have um, more to come? Yeah, I am actually doing revisions on a sequel to Isaiah Dunn is my hero. So Isaiah is still talking, so I will continue to write and hopefully that will be um, coming up real soon here. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. And thank you to all the viewers today. We've been sitting here with Kelly Baptist, uh, author of Isaiah Dunn is My Hero, winner of the 2021 Michigan Notable Book Award. And Kelly, thank you so much for being with us today. And and really share your story. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Not a problem.